So, you've settled your city and you don't know what to do next. You'll be faced with two options, to choose research and to choose production. Now, research is now, what we're going to focus on first, because if we look at both of them at the same time, especially if you're new to the game, this is very daunting. So we're going to close off that. If you're ever lost in the game, in the bottom right, you'll be able to click here to see what to do next. So it's prompting us to choose research. Now, each of these texts has a boost. And even though the text is quite small, the first three that you're presented with, animal husbandry, mining, and pottery, these don't have any boosts because they're kind of starter texts that lead on to more things. They're the cheapest texts in the game. These two, more expensive texts, I think they might have a similar cost. Yeah, both 50 cost. But this one is shorter because under here, the boost for astrology is find a natural wonder. Now, luckily enough, within our first turn, we have spawned right next to Lake Retba. We've got a boost to that. So that's completed, I think it's 40% of the tech for us. And we'd only need to take 13 turns to research that. So, for example, if we were a faith sieve like Gandhi's India or Spain, that could be amazing for us. And we'd definitely be lined for that kind of tech unless we desperately needed one of the mining pottery or animal husbandry. And I'll explain their uses. But that could be a really good start. Often, I find myself trying to desperately boost astrology so that I can not go down it and spend 20 turns researching that tech. So, you, like, finding a natural wonder as fast as possible is very useful for an early faith. Yeah. But for now, I am going to go with the decision of mining. Animal husbandry is always good if you've got cattle, for example, to improve here. And it also reveals the location of horses and can help you improve with camps and pastures, which is good for luxuries. Pottery is good if your city has terrible housing or terrible food. And it also leads on to much more important text. But I'm going to go for mining because we get the mine and the quarry improvements. And this will be this will mean we can improve this stone because that needs a quarry. And we can improve this amber, which needs a quarry. If you hover over it, it will say requires mining. So if I hover over this cattle, it will say requires animal husbandry. So the next thing you're going to want to do is choose production. Now, this is a little more simple when it comes to actually choosing the production especially on turn one. But first, what we're going to do, we're going to check our citizen management. So above the all the city information here, you have this tab, Manage Citizens. If we click that, I've set this up badly on purpose to show an example. Uh, it would naturally be, the citizen would naturally be over here, according to the game, but we'll say it's here. At the moment, this citizen is working a two-food tile. That means that... Apart from the two food, one production that your city center is getting from the tile that it's on, you're getting two food. And a citizen to upkeep also costs two food. So in, in eight turns, we'll grow because we have two surplus. This tile is terrible to work without any improvements because it's literally just sustaining the person working it. It's like they're working to feed themselves. If we take it off there and look at this, will mean the person working this will feed himself and give your city one production. Where it's automatically putting us, it wants them to feed themselves, essentially, give us one production and one culture. But for now, even though the culture is good, I'm going to go to here so that we can produce things as fast as possible. So that's two food, two production. So that's a good tile. That's where you want to generally, uh, if you're looking at more advanced city settling, which it might be a video I look at doing at some point, you want like a tile with four yields like so this one is good the forest and the stone stone on a hill means it has the two production whereas stone on the flatland only has this one so now we've worked that out we're gonna go here this will take 12 turns this will take six so if we had a look at when it was back on here it was gonna take 20 so it's quite a big difference and it's important that you do things like that the game can think that this is the best tile. This amber is the best tile. So if we go into production, I think this is quite an easy choice because I will always go scout first, if not scout second as well, because it's just so important that you see more of the map. We've got a monument which will help gain loyalty, which could be important for other cities, but not too much for this one, and give you culture. And if it's full loyalty, it's even more culture, which your capital will be. So you've got 
builder that can be helpful to improve things but right now all we could do is put a farm there and a farm there because that's the only improvement that's available at this point a builder would be more useful once we have these improvements uh, we could get more military units which isn't really ideal as they take longer to scout and we want to discover land as fast as physically possible the only time that I would get a military unit was if it was a unique unit so like the I think it's guest eye from Gaul or the Eagle Warrior from the Aztecs, uh, and there are other examples of that. But for now, I'm going to go with Scout, and that'll take six turns, and I will come back to this when there is a change. So, our Scout has been finished. We've explored a little bit of this area with our Warrior, and we have two options with our Scout. So, we can either move him manually, or if you're finding the game a bit too much and you're focusing on other things, if you click the plus arrow here above his portrait, you can do automate exploration. So that will mean he will explore in where the game thinks is a good direction to explore, which isn't always the best. And it's usually best early on to manually control them, but I completely understand. I put them on automatic when we hit like Renaissance or something. So I'm going to move, uh, as you can see, the scout has three moves, and we're going to move right across this flatland and go all the way to here. And they also have a very good vision. We discovered a tribal village already, which uh, scouts get a lot of experience from. Uh, we're going to go this way with our warrior, so we can kind of see our surrounding area. I want to scout around Lake Roberta so we can see if we can get another city that way. So the next thing, to, I would honestly say another scout again from this position. For in, in most scenarios, in almost every scenario, I'm going to go scout, scout. Sometimes even a third scout after that. But right now, I don't have any technologies. I don't desperately need a monument. I don't desperately need military units. Maybe if I'd seen barbarians approaching me by this point, but that's very rare. So I'm just going to go for another scout. So our city's just grown to two population. And if we go into citizen management, we now have an extra citizen. Again, I've placed that on purpose. Uh, I would say there are two good choices here. Usually, it would be between this hill and this cattle tile it depends if you want your city to grow quicker because we're growing in 12 turns where he was working or if we want the extra production considering we haven't got us uh set yeah. and we haven't got any districts to build i'm going to go for here so it's like this hill tile but it's just giving us an extra one culture which is going to be a big boost to code of laws which is the first civic you don't choose the civic at this point in the game which is basically a tech tree for culture I'm going to put that there, and we've got four turns left on this scout. We've also found a Barbarian scout, and our game is looking quite decent. We've scouted around a lot, and it's been a decent start. The only thing I could have done differently, really, differently still being good, I could have got Astrology and rushed a Holy Site. If I chose not to do mining, in a few turns, maybe, I would have had Astrology and... Holy Sites benefit massively from Natural Wonders. If I was to put the Holy Site there, it would get one adjacency from this mountain and two adjacency from that Natural Wonder Tile, two adjacency from that Natural Wonder Tile. So even though I wasn't planning a faith game as Persia, it would be useful to get a religion, A, to defend myself from losing to a faith game, and B, because there's such an amazing setup from it. So probably after mining, I would go in for astrology. Anyway, that concludes what I think you should get first. I may do a follow-up video a bit later on when it comes to not producing things like scouts, as my advice is pretty set in stone, saying that you should definitely get scouts, one if not more. But in other scenarios, say, not your first city, you don't want to go scout first. If this was my second city, I would have had the technology pottery by now and say if i settled the second city in desert or in tundra my lack of food be compensated for by building a granary so i would probably go that first if i settle a city too close to an enemy if i'm doing some forward settling i might have loyalty issues so i'd want to go monument first as the loyalty it provides so there are many different scenarios but from the settling your first city i think it's very set in stone what you should get. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in whatever the next tutorial will be.